people were, were very much against Insight when it first came yeah. on. They say that there will be maybe 70 people who, this, uh, maybe, actually, they say 700 people use the actual um, uh, needle exchange yeah. program. Do you think that um, the concern for the neighbors is that it will end up that you'll have a lot of addicts in the area? Do you think that the environment will change because of that? What did you there's, learn today? There's already a lot of addicts in this area, so I don't think you can add any more than what there already is. I think we're to our capacity, so let's take them off the street and put them inside where they're safe and where the community can stay safe. Mm -hmm. I think that people are going to notice, oh my God, what happened to all the addicts? Oh yeah, they're in there. They're safe and our kids are safe. So. They're going to, I think they're going to notice less addicts on the street. Which you know, there's the same amount of addicts, but not using on the street. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the, um, uh, Rob was telling me was about the use of fentanyl. Have you seen the increased use yeah. of fentanyl on the street? Tell and about that. Unfortunately, yes. I had two friends there Saturday night that bought some speed pills that were unfortunately cut with fentanyl, and they both were near death Saturday night. Uh, Friday night. Friday night. What yeah. happened? Uh, their speed pills, they were cut with fentanyl, and they went and injected the pills, and they didn't know, and they went into seizures and stopped breathing and stuff like that. Yeah. So with fentanyl, because it's powder, now they can lace other drugs with it. They can put it in the MDMA, they can put it in the speed pills, mm -hmm. they can repress actual morphine pills. Like you can buy the press off the internet, they can make fake morphine pills made with fentanyl, so you never know what you're getting anymore. And how long has the fentanyl issue been an issue, as far as you're concerned? As far as you know? Ever since it came out. Well, how long is that? Maybe uh, the last two years, right? Yeah, since a couple started, of years. A couple of years. And I haven't really paid attention. Well, they, they talk about skyrocketing rates of overdoses because of fentanyl. Would you say that that's accurate? Yes, that's accurate. And the thing, if someone overdoses on fentanyl in the alley, they're not going to survive the overdose on fentanyl here at least there's people here to respond to the overdose mm -hmm. and overdose is life-threatening you know I can go down and it only takes me seconds to stop breathing mm -hmm. and a couple of minutes I'm gone do you think that users will want to use go inside and use will they not be more comfortable in a home or in a would they, if they you know would users use it is the question it's going to take time for the addicts to get comfortable because I remember out when I first started using Insight, I was really nervous. I went in there, they like, give us a code name. I gave them my code name. I sat down. I left. I'm like, I'm scared. It took me three attempts to get myself into the back room and get myself familiar, for like familiar with the staff, the nurses, and how things are run. So it's going to be a process for the community and also for the addict to get used to having this center within our community. And once you started using it, what was the, uh, why did you keep coming back? I felt safe. Uh, I overdosed there a couple of times and they were able to respond. And then when I had enough insight, helped me get into Cordova Detox, kind of, because I connected with some staff at Insight. Mm -hmm. I went to Cordova Detox, got myself detoxed and sober, and then they Thank helped you. me get a bus ticket back to Ottawa because I said, look, I got to get out of Vancouver because I'm going to die in your center. <laughs> How long have you been clean, Jared? I'm not clean. Oh, you're not clean? I'm not clean, so what are you but... what today? Uh, mainly opiates. Yeah, mainly opiates? Yeah, okay. and that's a really dangerous drug to use, especially alone. That's why I would come to use the center. Okay. Even though I have housing, I feel more secure in the center. How many times do you use a day? Uh, three times, three roughly, times. and once in the mornings. So I feel okay, yeah. so okay. I'm not dope set. Yeah. Once in the afternoon, once I before I go to bed. I'm trying to do a harm reduction thing and bring myself off the opiates without having to use methadone. So you'd be in here three times a day using these facilities to at, make sure that you get an overdose? At, at least once a day, because I live such a distance. It'd be travel time, but I try to come in at least once a day, if not twice a day. Now Cordova out in Vancouver, tell us a little bit about that experience and why you relapsed? Did you have the intake resources you needed at the Insight if you said, I want to quit? Did they have the resources ready to intake you? Tell well, us a little I, bit about that. I don't think I wanted to quit. I just wanted to get out of Vancouver. Okay. I, I was going down too fast and too hard. I, when I came back, it was 105 pounds. You're originally from Ottawa? I'm originally from Smith Falls, just outside of Ottawa. 
So tell us about what your future is moving forward to getting off the drugs. Are you seeking any addiction counseling or are you just going to use the movie? No, right now I'm with the ICM program, the Intensive Case Management Program through Oasis here mm -hmm. at Sandy Hill. And over the past three years in the ICM program, my drug usage has declined. Good. I have taken steps through harm reduction programs to get myself clean and sober eventually. You know, I want to do it on my time. I don't want someone to say, you have to go to a treatment center and be clean in six months. You know, I don't think I'm mentally ready because I have the mental health issues too. Right. So I have both issues to address yeah. and it's going to take time. But Oasis here has beautiful programs and I think this safe injection site that they want to open would be a beautiful addition to their already existing programs that they have. What do you think the biggest challenges for addicts on the street in Ottawa is today? The police. The police. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, they're very mean to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, I want to say it in nice terms. They're very mean to us for the most part to the addicts that are downtown and stuff. But in all fairness, the addicts are mean to them too, right? So... Are, are you at the mission or the homeless set? Which homeless center are you at? Um, no, I, I have the housing to the Housing First oh, Initiative here at Good Oasis, the ICM program. I've been successfully housed now for three years without being evicted because of my drug usage, but my drug usage can also pose a threat to uh, my housing. So having a center here too, I don't have to do drugs at my house. I don't have to find another addict to sit there with me to make sure I don't overdose and then eventually have a house full of addicts. Here I can come to a place, leave my place as a sober living place and say, you know what guys, I don't need you at my house anymore. I have a safe place to go. Thank you very much.